Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a while since you have seen me, but I have recently made some positive changes in my life and in my work that will allow me to dedicate more time to my channel. So I'm making tonight's themes about new beginnings and leaps of faith. And to celebrate this most auspicious moment, I'm going to enjoy this ultra premium cigar, a diamond crown Julius Caesar. It still has the wrapper on it. And I don't want to tear it. The Diamond Crown Julius Caesar cigar made by the J.C. Newman Cigar Company comes in several lengths. The one I have right here is the Robusto because that was all the money I was willing to spend. Let's see, maybe if I squeeze it from one end. On the band, I'll hold that up for you, is a picture of Julius Caesar Newman, founder of the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. And our story begins in 1890, when J.C. Newman was 14 years old. In 1890, Julius Caesar Newman, his mom and dad, and the rest of his family emigrated from Hungary and came to America looking to make a fresh start to their lives. As new immigrants, starting their lives anew in America would have been very difficult. So everyone had to work to do their part to support the family. J.C. Newman, at 14 years old, decided to help support his family by becoming an apprentice cigar maker. The kid had big dreams. Things were going great until a few years later in 1895, the United States went through a really, really bad recession. And J.C. Newman was 19 years old then, and he lost his job at the cigar making company. So what did he do? He decided to take a leap of faith and he borrowed $50 and bought a bale of tobacco and took a couple of boards and nailed them together. And he set up a one man cigar rolling operation in his family's barn. And he rolled all the cigars he could roll all that live long day. And that is how, at 19 years old, Julius Caesar Newman formed the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. This company still exists today, over 120 years later and it is the oldest family-owned premium cigar maker in the United States. So they created the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar to commemorate the anniversary of when J.C. Newman founded the family company. Did I mention he was 19? You know what I was doing at 19 years old? I was not forming a multi-generational enterprise. I was in the army though. And back then, I smoked really, really, really cheap cigars. The 
this particular cigar goes very well with coffee. So I will be enjoying a nice espresso. I love the intensity of flavor in this espresso. I enjoy making espresso. There's a sense of preparation and ritual to it that calms me and eases my mind into a state of relaxation. I can get away with without clogging my machine. get over these tiny little espresso cups. They make you feel like you're having a pretend tea party with dolls. Before enjoying a good cigar, it is worth taking a wee bit of time to toast it. Cheers, cigar. No, I'm kidding. That's not how you do it. Why do we toast a cigar? Well, it's because of the way a cigar is constructed. A cigar is typically engineered from three main components. The filler, the binder, and the wrapper. The filler is a blend of tobacco that forms the center of the cigar. Generally, the filler is responsible for determining how strong a cigar tastes, and how fast it burns. Leaves from the top of the tobacco plant usually produce the strongest flavor, while the bottom leaves have the best burning properties. In the case of this Diamond Crown Julius Caesar, the filler is a blend of leaves grown in Central America and the Dominican Republic. These leaves are aged for a minimum of five years. Then a master cigar maker blends and combines them in such a way that the slower burning leaves end up in the very middle of the roll so as to create a desired ratio of flavor and burn time. It's a very carefully crafted balance and the methods that the master cigar makers use are kept secret. Holding everything together in the cigar is the binder. The binder is essentially the girder that holds the filler in place and provides structural integrity to the cigar. Binders usually come from the bottom part of the tobacco plant where the leaves are thicker and stronger. These leaves have little to no flavor. This binder used in this particular cigar comes from an aged Dominican leaf and it burns at a tad slower pace than the filler and you'll see why this is important in just a bit. And finally, you have the wrapper. 
the wrapper is the most important and the most expensive part of a cigar and it gives the cigar the majority of its flavor. This particular type of leaf lives a pampered, coddled life. It is grown under a shade to prevent it from becoming too thick and tough. The ideal wrapper leaf is thin and smooth with hardly any veins, yet it must also be full of flavorful oils and have good elasticity because it has to wrap around the whole outside of the cigar several times without tearing and it has to look good and taste good while doing it. A lot gets asked of this leaf. The wrapper leaf on the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar comes from a particular strain of hybrid tobacco called the Ecuadorian Habano. After these special leaves are harvested, they are baled and aged for five years. At the end of the five years, they are unpacked from their bales and reinspected. Only the silkiest, smoothest of the leaves may get back into the batch again for a second round of aging. Wrapper leaves are held onto the binder with a smidge of all natural adhesive and by their nature being elastic and full of flavor oils, they combust at a different rate from the binder and the filler. So when you take the time to toast a cigar before you smoke it, you give the wrapper a chance to warm up and fuse to the binder. And then the binder gets a chance to warm up. And by the time the filler has started burning, all the cigar components are working together, releasing their blend of flavor com compounds evenly the way they're meant to. I'm out of practice. It's been a long, long time since I've smoked a cigar, so I don't even know if I can make O's anymore. Let me try it again. Am I even doing it? Now, the whole point of enjoying a premium cigar is to taste the mix of all those nuances and notes of flavor from the blend of the leaves. And the tasting is done all up in this area, in your head. So there is no need, nor is there any point in inhaling the cigar smoke. That's not going to give you your best cigar smoking experience. The flavor of this cigar is, it's very, very, if I could think of the best way to describe it, it's very rich and it's, it's not too heavy. And I really like that because I don't, I don't like those cigars that are just so that just hits you in the head with their intensity. And I also don't like cigars that are too, you know, too light on a flavor. This is a medium body cigar, but it's full of flavor. It's a little peppery, got some notes of black pepper in there. Uh, definitely, definitely some strong notes of coffee, which is why this cigar is ideal for drinking with a really good espresso. They, it's like they're made for each other.
if anything, it sings like good espresso and this cigar, they like, they enhance each other. This cigar makes this uh, espresso have like a little bit of smokiness to the flavor and the espresso kind of complements the flavor of this cigar. There's uh, a little bit of spiciness to this, some woodiness. Some nice, soft, creamy notes to it. It's got some sweetness to it, but it's not too sweet, which I like. You guys didn't think I would just have one espresso, did you? So, ah, another cup. In keeping with tonight's themes of new beginnings and leaps of faith, I have, I have taken the plunge and made some awesome new changes for my channel. One big change that will benefit not just my YouTube work, but my outside of YouTube work is, I have decided that this will be the year I take back my basement and turn it into a dedicated work studio. That is where we are now. Can't tell because I have this backdrop behind me. I'm going to pull it aside so you can see. There we go. I'll let you behind the curtain in just a minute. Uh, so I've decided to turn my basement into a, uh, a dedicated work studio and I will take you on a tour. The other change is that my channel, Soul Repose ASMR, now has an Amazon store. I am frequently asked about the things I use in my videos or about what nail color or lip color I'm wearing. Where can someone find this thing or that thing they saw in my videos? So I have created a curated collection of these goodies and placed a link to them in my Amazon store. Here, you'll not only find stuff you saw in my videos, but you can also get a sneak peek at things I might use in future videos, as well as things I put into my store just because I love them and recommend them. Check it out for yourself. The link to my shop is below in the description. And now for a tour of my studio slash workshop. Our tour starts here. I actually live up the stairs in that part of the house. And there's Jack. Hey Jack. I used to rent out this basement, but after my roommate moved out, I decided to take it back and make it my workshop and studio. In here, as you can see, I keep my lights, my mic stands, right here, my tripod, right there. Having this space available means I can keep my lights and mic stands fully assembled 
and ready to use at any time. I don't have a lot of room upstairs. So in my part of the house, so whenever I make videos, my gear got in everyone's way. It's very, very bulky. And as you can see in here, I still use the the old timey lights, the fluorescent lights with the ginormous light bulb. So now, I'm able to keep everything up and fully assembled, which is very convenient for me. These fabric strips here are because I was using um, some black material to make a gobo for this light, because I wanted to create a textured light. Incidentally, we are shooting directly under the spot in the house where uh, I used to shoot the majority of my videos. So right above the ceiling <laughs> was where I did it. Now there isn't any sound deadening between the basement and the upstairs. And as you can see, this room would be used as a tenant's living room because the cable connection is here and it's right connected behind that table up against the wall there. So um, if anyone were watching TV down here and I wanted to shoot a video, I would have to wait for them to either leave the house or go to sleep. The majority of the furniture down here is what has been left behind by former roommates. That right there is probably the fourth coffee table and the fifth couch that someone has left behind when they moved out. I don't know why they don't just take their stuff with them. Well, they left behind that table too. And left behind that and that and that table over there. I provide all of the silverware, the microwave, the small appliances, and the dishes, pots and pans for my roommates because they'll bring furniture with them when they move in, but for some reason they never have their own dishes other than coffee mugs. I keep all my tennis balls under this sink. I'm a tennis player. I play about four times a week. So I go through balls by the case. And I only got this brand because it was on sale. shower. And this door here is the laundry area. Anyone who lives here is allowed to use the laundry whenever they want. Um, keeping the bed and the bedroom furniture in here so that I can use this room as a guest bedroom if I need to because I do not have a guest bedroom upstairs. But now I have one. And I'm also using it as a place to store all this stuff. I didn't have any space before. Now I do. This is my ancient old Mac Pro, the one that looks like a giant cheese grater. This computer got me through film school. I love it. 
I, I still have a lot of my old student film footage on it. I'm never going to show that to you ever. <laughs> it's terrible. So, um, I feel sentimentally attached to it. I don't know if I'll ever get rid of it. Let's see what's in this closet. What is that? Oh, those are just clothes. More clothes. Some bags. So, this is the main area here. This is my studio and workshop. It's still going to take a lot of work to get it the way I want. And as you can see, I'm it's a mess. I'm still setting it up. Some of what you see here will give you clues about upcoming videos I have planned for you. I'll show you what I have down here. This is my polymer clay stuff. I do a lot of Polymer clay sculpting. collection here. These are um, all Marvel comic books from the 80s. Got X-Men. Gotta put some of this back in the plastic. Oh, Conan. Where did that come from? I don't even, I don't even know what that was for. Fallen Angels. This is a storyline that has to do with the New Mutants. And speaking of the New Mutants, I have that here. So 80s X-Men comics. So whenever you see Storm on the cover of an X-Men comic book. She's always going through a really bad time. She's, or she's angry about something. <laughs> Poor Storm. My Spider-Man toy. I love this guy. He's got 67 points of articulation. Can't f hardly find these anymore. Now I use him as um, like a figure model when I'm drawing. I just, um, like when I'm drawing, I just reduce the musculature. It's kind of crazy insane. Some artists will actually sand down the muscles and then paint the whole thing uh, a neutral gray, but I have not been able to bring myself to do that. I just, I almost did. I took a Dremel tool to him and I, I held it like a, a centimeter away from him and then I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I stopped. Even his little toes bend.
casing medium in my portfolio. This is one of my, oh goodness, it's so big. I'm gonna have to open it on the floor because it's really heavy. This is one of my um, larger portfolios. This is uh, a color pencil piece I did. And over here, that's an oil piece I did on a piece of oil paper or canvas paper. There's a still life I was working on. Up under that table, it's where I keep more of my sporting goods equipment, like old tennis rackets and stuff. I've got oil paints in here. I work mostly in oil and colored pencil. Some oil bars. Oh, these things are nifty. These are um, water soluble oil paints that clean up with soap and water. It's a real game changer. My colored pencils. Separated in groups of color. These are my clay sculpting tools right here. My paint brushes. is my pop-up green screen. Here's another one of my portfolios. This is for smaller stuff. That's a, um, a charcoal I did. My comic book paper. In here I keep my Copic markers. charts. There they are. Oh goodness, the smell of alcohol coming out of this gin is so strong. So that is it. And oh yeah, right behind me is the patio door that leads to the backyard. It's nighttime right now, so there's nothing to see. It's just a, a yard. Okay, so as you can see, my studio is a work in progress, but I feel very good about it. I'm optimistic, and if things don't work out, I can always rent out this space again. Oh. rookie mistake. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am excited and looking forward to the videos I have planned for you. Some of the items featured in this video are in my Amazon store, not the cigar, sorry, you cannot buy cigars on Amazon, but some of the other items featured in this video today, like my nail polish colors, these, etc. Uh, I'll put a link to them in my Amazon store. The link is below in the description. Before you leave, don't forget to like this video if you did and subscribe to my channel to get notifications of when I post upcoming videos that I really, really think you're going to enjoy. I love you all, and until we see each other again, arrivederci. Ooh, that was a nice O. Try that again. Oh, that's just hanging in the air. 
Oh my goodness, I'm gonna do that again. I feel like I should be in a library with leather-bound books and mahogany furniture. I don't have leather-bound books or mahogany furniture. All right, cigar is almost done. One last O, one last attempt at making O's before I call it a night.